Yo, what's up guys, Nanjra here, and welcome to yet another video. So for this video, it's gonna be the intro to building for my, for my tortoise dragon. Okay. So again, here's the list, if you, if you didn't see it, if you didn't watch the... If you, watch, if you didn't watch the gameplay video, go ahead and look at that. I'll go ahead and drop the link for that down, down in the description below. Alright, so this is the deck. Now, when it comes to dragon, well, in general, uh, well, specifically when it comes to ramp dragon, you're going to have a few core, or you're going to have several core cards that you can't just, like, you just, like, can't, you just, like, have to have in the deck. So, as an example of cards that I think are core, I think... The Polly, the Bahamut, the Israfil, the Fervor, the Sybil, the Ayala for now, the Summoner, the or the Oracle, the Breath of Salamander, and Blazing Breath are all super core. Oh, the Raft Drake too, I think. Now that the, now that equates to about I think it's twenty seven cards. So with those thirteen cards you can go ahead you can go ahead and, and define the flavor of your deck. Now you can obviously go for a Saha package, you can go for Storm, you can go for Dread Sea Shenanigans, and and so on and so forth. Now for me, what I wanted when I made this deck was to be able to be was to be able to survive right now in, in, in an in an undefined meta game. Because in an undefined meta game, generally what happens is you're gonna see a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of greed pals come up, and that's just you know decks decks are decks that, that are playing things that, that they know in their heart that they shouldn't, but they're just playing it either because they don't know any better or just because they're well just dumb. <laughs> An example of what I mean by this is I was playing versus versus a dragon opponent who had Odin Bahamut, sorry, who had Odin Polyphonic Roar and Satan all in the same deck. Why do those all exist in your same deck? That, that Specifically, specifically, just the Odin. Well, it also says too. Why, why, why are you playing these things? Like Odin doesn't hit anything relevant in the meta. The only thing it hits is opposing Polys and and Seraph. But like Seraph isn't played at all right now. Like why? And then the Satan. Satan, in my opinion, is way too slow in pretty much like every single class. Like I, I, I just would not play that card. I don't know. You can just see like things like that pop up all the time and. And I wanted, and I wanted to, treat, to be able to to be fine versus aggro, and then be fine versus some of these greed pals. Versus greed pals, the, the combination of of Polly plus Bahamut can solo every single like wants to go to ten deck in the game. Like just as long as you play well, and, and you you can like get the Polly to play early enough. Additionally, as long as as long as the Polly for some reason doesn't get blown up, because yes, some people are playing are playing text to Polly right now, and that execution. As well as just you know, incidental. I have am I have am amulet destruction, i.e., uh, I'm a blood deck that has access to Emerelda. So, to that note, one thing that I noticed when, when I play it when, when I've been playing Dragon is that like, is that is I've said this as yeah, as I've said this a few times when discussing Dragon and explain explaining why why Dragon is so difficult for for some people to like for some people to like comprehend. And to be quite honest, it's not a curve deck. Like, by, by that, what I mean is that, like, a lot of times, your best play is usually, it, it's, it's, for, it's for whatever reason, usually not going to be your best play. Like, for example, sometimes Sybil on, five, on turn 5 on 5 mana is incorrect. Just because versus some, just, just because versus sun decks, the healing matters more than the ramp, and so you want to secure the healing. As well as you know, get the ramp. So sometimes it could be it could be more correct to play it on six mana, or sorry, yeah, on six mana. And and for this deck, like, well, sorry, sorry. Uh, but 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 before I get to this deck, well, uh, another thing that I noticed is that like a lot of times you would have like you would have turns in which you had like no plays whatsoever, be it because you didn't have mana or because you physically couldn't play the card. And and to be honest, like in Shadowverse, Sh I don't think Shadowverse is a game where you can, where you can like, well, in general, in any game you play, you, you don't you don't want to be given free turns, in which a, a turn of like just like straight just like no development or whatever, 
unless 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 whatever you're doing is so amazing that they just they, they can like afford they can afford to do that dragon is not dragon is not one of those classes that you, most of the time especially a dragon that hasn't that hasn't for whatever reason been able to ramp and and so it's, so with this deck like i have a lot of early game plays i the carrot scale into the late game because a lot of times even when you get the 10 mana dragon, you don't always use all all ten, all 10 of those play points just because a lot of times when you're using 10 play points, it means you're casting this guy, and a lot of times you don't want, you don't want to be casting Bahamut, which which I know sounds weird, but it's actually true, because like you want to, you want to try to value you want to try to value and conserve your Bahamut for as long as possible, in, in a lot of matchups like for example versus Shadow, I, I I really don't want to ever play that Bahamut just because if I play that Bahamut. I, I give them vital information. Okay, here's one Bahamut. That means that I can I can go a little bit harder, and he's not gonna be able, he's not gonna be able to answer this. He's not gonna be able to answer this Bahamut with Bahamut. Like as long as long as you hold the Bahamut in your hand, you you for you force them to respect it. Like if I don't have to respect your Bahamut anymore, I'm gonna go fucking ham. I'm gonna just you know drop drop my board. I uh, drop my hand onto the board and just say you know, ha huh, yeah, what you got. And that's one of those things that I think that people kind of like don't really, I guess, like realize a lot of the time is that like the uh, is that like the hidden power of being able to hold on to your power cards. And for this deck, like, I like having the carrots because like the carrots like they make sure that, that I always have something that I can be doing. Uh, because because yes, even so, even something as small as small as just you know playing a two two over and over again is super super impactful because. In Shadowverse as a game, there, uh, the power of, of just being able to untap with all your with all of your mana with a creature in play. It doesn't even matter wh what type of creature it is. You're just being able just being able to go to go into your turn with a creature still in play usually means that you're winning the game, and it usually helps you do so much. Like with with the carrots, like the carrots that help out with um with the ease of your AOE just because like a lot of times your, your opponents are you're either going to be making trades with these or your opponents are going to be trading into these and, and all and all of those like two damage like basically pings like they all kind of add up and, and they all kind of like make things like say your breath of salamander better like for example it, ordinarily if you breath of salamander you do five to one target and then two to, and then two to everything else if it's the enhanced version of it but with a carrot, you can you, you can you can modify that equation to being either seven to seven to one target and then two to everything else, or five to one target, four to, four to a second target, and then two to everything else. Most of the times, being able to being able to, to spread out to, to spread out the damage like that is usually gonna be enough is usually gonna be enough to clear. Additionally, you're gonna force your opponent to using uh, into using resources that, that they otherwise will be able to save because ramp because ramp dragon is is primarily generally a, a slow kind of deck yes you can go ahead and you, you can not ramp your opponent and you can be at 10 mana as early as possible however the earliest you can do that is to not ramp and, and then be there by turn six by turn six aggro usually has you dead to rights aggro usually has you dead to rights control control is just getting started so it's generally like if they can deal if they can deal with whatever the first two two or three threats you play are whatever the first two or three th two or three threats they actually play they're generally going to be able to start dealing with the rest of them this is why this is why for example why nep as well as as well as aegis haven has a very good has a very, very good time versus versus dragon just because they can contest the, the big things that that dragon wants to do relatively easily while also, while also pushing the, pushing their own agenda at the same time. So for the elder tortoise, like I said, like I said in the video, I like it. I like it. I liked it a lot, but I, I really didn't think that you could play it, just because you have a lot of four drops. But but because I was able to, to kind of like cut space, and because I was able to, to, cut, to cut two of my four drops slightly, I, I could add space for it. I don't think this is a card they play as a three of. I like I like it quite a lot as a two of, just because like, just being able to say to yourself, okay, I I, ha I have to, I have four to, I have four to five evos instead of just two to three evos. It's actually really really important. It's actually really strong. Like for example, you you see luminous snake and sword all the time, and and a lot of times you you feel like under, you feel like under a lot of pressure because like while yeah the sword player is trading evos with you. When the evos that they're trading with you are free evos, you, you, you like you're slowly but surely falling behind because like because suddenly you'll you like look up and and the sword player still has two real evos that they can use on anything, 
and you have zero and then you just like feel bad because then the story player gets like to gets to dictate what whatever's happening and that's one of the core that's one of the core principles of this deck that you just get to like dictate all the trades you you never you never have to worry about uh, about like oh okay well i'm gonna fall behind on board because like because the combination of, of the carrots plus the aoe plus the elder Tours to give you more evos in the late game make make sure that you almost never fall behind on board like if you notice in the game in the game that i played with this deck versus shadow like i i, I never felt i never felt pressured the, the entire time like like sure uh, the Shadow player did, did like misplay and let me get my poly to play, but like, but even in the games um, that I played with the second war, I wasn't able to get the poly. It still felt very, very good, just because I, I just because I wasn't under pressure, because like, because I, I was I was able to, to force the Shadow player to just keep making trades and, and so just, you know being able to hit my face and being able to pressure me. Additionally, with the with the Elder Tortoise, it gives you more plays on nine now. For me, one of the strong one of the strongest things in Dragon they can do is on nine mana, go Sybil plus Rahab and then Evo the Sybil, or in this case, go Elder Tortoise plus Sybil, Evo the Elder Tortoise. Just because you have two bodies in play. Again, being being able to diversify your threats is very very important in this game. Just because even if your opponent can deal with one of them, they're 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 almost assuredly not going to be able to deal with two of them outside of using outside of using a, ma a major resource, be it that of like say Themis, Bahamut, etc. And all of those things that they're using, those all add up just because, like, each time they use one of those, most of the board wipes in this game co uh, usually usually costs your entire turn to cast. Like, say, for example, Revelation that costs eight mana, Themis that costs that costs six mana, Bahamut that's ten mana, and and generally when you when you when you have to spend time casting those cards, like you you for you forego being able to being able to take being able to make any like headway or progress or like the, or or just overall development. But you know, you use those, and usually I'm gonna have a carrot in play. I can, I can just keep replaying the carrot and just you know keep keep applying the pressure. So I get to like attack you from two ways. I, I get to attack you from the I'm playing a, I'm playing a ton of small defenses, and I get to attack you from the oh hey, I I I, ha, I have I have some like nine drops and ten drops in my deck that that also you know kind of threaten to end the game by themselves. The other card that a lot of people wanted wanted uh, wanted to ask me about was the Hector. So for the Hector, this this was a very very I guess like questionable choice because I because I am pretty sure with the exception of me I have all oh, sorry with the exception of of me both playing it and also and also seeing it happen to me that that not many people have actually played versus Hector and Dragon. To be honest, Hector and Dragon well Hector in general is a bit is a very very good card just because he's not only a base board but he's also a proactive board. So I talk about this all the time, but but part of the re well. I say all the time, but I, I, really, I actually haven't talked about this in a video yet. But, but one of the reasons why why why, why Shadow Versus is so is so, is so, like, is so aggressively focused is because a lot of the wards in the game they're all passive wards. All right, so there's two types of wards. There's passive wards, and then and then and then there's and then there's proactive wards. So passive wards are gonna be things like are gonna be things like Saber Hob. The reason why he's a passive ward is because he gives your opponent. The, the chance to decide how they want to deal with him, especially if you don't have an Evo with him. Whereas the proactive ward is Hector, who he gets to, he has to, he gets to decide not one but two trades if you have an Evo before your opponent can can choose how, how they want to interact with him. And that's actually very very huge because when you give the opponent the chance the chance to interact with you, then uh, that also means that you're giving them that either uh, that you're giving them a chance to blow you out. Like like say for example. You play you play you play Rahab on four. Then you're say you're then say you're uh you're like maybe say like sword opponent or something like that. They they go ahead and they just go Lyrial Evo trade trade to your hob. Your your hob your hob died. Sure, your your opponent lost an Evo, but now your opponent has the board. You you still can't use AoE yet, and you're just in a very, very bad spot because they'll because they'll most likely have like multiple creatures in play. Whereas like whereas say with Hector. Hector again would have been able to take would have been able to take on two guys, and then and then we'll, we'll have also been able to threaten to take out a third because Hector, when evolved, well Hector just in general has, has very very good stats. When evolved, he's a six six, and and for me, a lot of times I what I found what I found would happen to me is that is that when I played versus like neutral decks that that, that, that were like running Alice and whatnot, that like if they ever like buff the Hector and then like evolve the Hector and then ping the dude, that I usually lost the game. Because, 
because the Hector will, will be a 7-7 seven, seven at that point. There's actually one, there's actually only one card in the game. Well, sorry, two cards in the game. Two cards in the game. Two cards in the game that on five mana can actually trade into Hector and live when he's evolved as a, as a seven seven and even and even actually and even actually as like a six six as a six six like there's only base five base five HP creatures uh, before evolved so so for example civil Felice Gr uh, gruff. And then the, and then there's like and then there's like dead Mirage, but but that's like that's like four cards in the, in the entirety of, of like the five drop pool. That's actually really really huge. So I really wanted to be able to play around with this card. Now the biggest question, well sorry, the second biggest question that I've got re that I've received regarding he regarding Hector is, do you have do you even have enough neutral to, to trigger this card? So regarding neutral, oh, sorry, re regarding neutrals, one 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 good rule uh, one good rule of thumb. When we have to like, we have to use like synergy based cards, is to use the is is to use the mathematical equation of of having either in some cases two of or in this case three three of how ho however many copies of the cards you're playing. So for example, if you're using if you're using a neutral that requires you to have three that uh, that requires you to have three of a neutral in your hand or whatever, then you have to do n times three. So so n is going to be the number of copies you're playing, and then you're going to like multiply that by three. So if you want to play one hector, you have to you have to play at least three neutrals. If you want to play two hectors, you have, you have to play at least six. And in my case, if I'm playing three, you have to play at least nine. So if you see here, I have three Baja, two Israfil, that's seven, or sorry, sorry, I lied, that's five. I have two carrots, and I have three hectares. So so at the moment, I'm I'm just I'm just barely 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 cutting the cutting cu cutting the n times three. However, because I'm playing the carrot, that in my opinion, I felt I felt that that allowed me to be a little bit a little bit more loose and uh, um and close to the edge with, with the number of neutrals that I was playing. Just because when you have the carrot, the carrot never gets banished. The carrot is always in your hand, so it always feeds so it always feeds into your into your n um into your n times three. So additionally, uh, with the way with the way that I've been, with, uh, with the way that I've been playing the deck, I've I've been I've been very very reluctant to reluctant to, to play to play out my Bahamut just because like again Bahamut is your I don't want to die to memes or Oh my god, I'm losing. Hit the panic switch. So, so yeah. So, so, uh, so as a result, I'm, I'm usually able, I'm usually able, able to keep enough neutrals in, in hand in order in order to be able to trigger it. However, even when you're not playing the neutrals and even when you can't trigger it, it's still a very very good card just because it's still it's still a six it's still a, a four four ward that evolves into a six six. It also, unlike unlike say another uh, card doesn't doesn't like doesn't have to like blow up your board and have like subpar stats here's looking at you goblin mountain demon <sighs> yeah like in the it, but like uh, additionally it's one of those cards that has a surprise factor because again you're not expecting dragon to be playing this card so so some so some things they, they like to do versus dragon such as say such as say high pri priority cards behind wards that that's not going to work for us hector because hector can ping because hector can ping and kill the card the big, uh, the biggest thing for me, or sorry, the biggest like highlight moment for me when while using this card while playing this deck was actually versus Rune. I was able to, all right, so it was versus Dirt Rune, which, which to be honest, like the matchup can go either way, uh, provided that the Dirt Rune player is, is both good enough and, and also sees it also see, sees all sees all of their good like strong value cards. But yeah, the the Dirt Rune player he he tried to get me by going Remy Remy. Uh, Remy Remy, if you don't know what it is, it's a, it's, I believe it's a 3-4 that evolves into a 5-6, and then it's also Earthrite, summon, summon a Guardian Golem. A Guardian Golem is a 3-3 ward. So he made that play, and ordinarily, versus Dragon, that play will be like a death sentence, especially on five, especially on 4 or 5 mana, because you physically cannot clear both, both of those creatures in the same turn. But with the Hector, I was, I was able to ping the Guardian Golem, and evolve into the Remy Remy, kill the Remy Remy, and then I have 6-1 in play. That was actually huge because Dirt Rune actually doesn't run 
well, I lied. They they have like they have red hot ritual, but if he doesn't have the red hot ritual in his hand, then he has to like evolve. He has to evolve the creature into me. That that that's gonna feel awful for him. Like a large part of a large part part of the deck is just you know uh, it's just working on it's just working on both surprise factors as well as constantly constantly adjusting your game plan for what you're gonna do each game. Because some games you're gonna have. You're, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to play it you're gonna be able to like do dragon things and you're gonna be able to just like slam a bahamut then just aoe the board and then kill them or you know slam an israel he, uh heal up versus aggro nuke their board and then they just concede or just you know play a bunch of carrots play a bunch of doofuses or whatever go ahead and, and, and just play like a and just play like a sort of like value grind game and and just kind of win that way because you because thankfully like you you can both go tall and you can also go wide if you need to and that's that's very, very huge because dragon is a deck that traditionally cannot go wide the, the only the only version of the deck that can actually kind of go wide is the aggro dragon but even then you can't you can't you're, you're kind of like limited to how wide you can go just because like dragon doesn't really have tokens well i lied dragon has some tokens but the tokens that they have right now are kind of bad so Oh, and then lastly, Raftrake. So Raftrake is a very, very good card. Ra Raftrake, Raftrake is a very, very good not to aggro. He's also he's also very, very good not to mid range. He's actually one one of the better cards that, that no one ever talks about. And, and if you watch my if you if you watch one of my previous videos, turning up the heat with Raftrake, which I which I believe uh, came out actually two or three days ago, then you'll see that that like a Raftrake is a very, very is a very, very flexible card. It allows you to do a lot of things. Like for like say for example versus Shadow. Versus Shadow, Raftrake nukes every single board that they get that they can make outside of a Catacombs board, which is actually insane because because Death's Breath is that has actually been is actually historically very very difficult for Dragon to deal with because like the only way the only way the Dragon can deal with it is with Conflagration, but that takes up your entire turn to do nothing because you can't because you can't play anything else. Bahamut, but you, but again, like I said earlier, you don't want to play Bahamut until. Until you can until you can force out the majority of their lurching corpses plus necro assassins, and then Grimnir. But Grimnir is also bad because like because you uh, you're playing a T three, but the T three play, plays plays directly into into zombie party. So like if if you go Grimnir and then they zombie party you, then you're, then you're gonna feel bad. If you go Grimnir and then they and then they and then they develop versus you, you're also gonna feel bad then too. But Raftrick is a but Raftrick is a nice medium. Raftrick lets you nuke the, it lets you nuke their board. You, you usually won't have multiple creatures in play, so it lets you nuke their board. They also get a four four at four four. He's one HP above Zombie Party, so so and they're not gonna they're not gonna Zombie Party unless they can also kill the Raftrick in the same turn. But it, but they do that. The only way that the only way that they're doing that is that they're pairing it with with say like a a Mimi from Cerberus. But even then, like you're fine, you're fine with that too, just because like the Raftrick so so soaked up two damage for you, and also so and also like uh, force them to like play a zombie party. They can they can probably they can probably just like AOE with something else, like say uh, like say like Breath of the Sodman or something like that. Versus Sword, Raftrick is actually really key because a lot because right now like there's a lot of Amber Sword going around, and so if you can combine the Hector plus Sybil plus Raftrick. You can kind of force the you can kind of force the aggro sword player in, in, into into a spot where they have to like where they're playing where they're playing um, vagabond frog that they have to like put that they have to push their vagabond frog down into range where you can go ahead and, and blow it up with the raftrick because raftrick for eight is so 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 good. Additionally, first additionally versus say mid range sword, the raftrick is still very very good because raftrick again. It, it deals it deals with most boards in the meta game on eight mana. Additionally, versus sword, it has a nice ca it has a nice caveat of being able to of being one of the few cards in dragon that can go ahead and, and trade into and trade into evolve Albert on five. That is actually insane because historically dragon 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 is never able to, to deal with that because the biggest creature that, that we had at that point uh, that, that we had before this card was goblin mountain demon as a five nine but as a five nine the only thing you're doing is just kind of slightly just slightly del uh, delaying the inevitable and that's not good that's not where you want to be because you want to be able to go either one for one or plus one 
versus say things like Albert and the, and the, and the like, just so that way you're not like losing tempo. Versus blood, you blow up bats, and then like later in the game you, you, you get to blow up bigger stuff, but, but you usually just be blowing up bats, and that's gonna be like, that's gonna be like nice. Because additionally, as a 4-4, you can go ahead and pre-evolve it as well. As as a 6-6 six, six creature, there's nothing in blood on like 5 mana that can actually trade into that and live. Which is actually very, very insane. Because because then you suddenly get initiative. When you have initiative, you can go ahead you can go ahead you can go ahead and, and play and play you can go ahead and, and, and sort of like pass back and sort of like pass back initiative by, by playing by playing things like like forever to go ahead and heal. If you can play the forever, you can heal. If you uh, you can possibly see more AOEs from that. If you see more AOEs, you, you can you can you can continue to just kind of like blow them back and, and just like AOE the board until suddenly they're out of resources. Right now, aggro blood is uh, oh sorry. Right now, blood as a whole is is in flux just because a lot of their cards have been nerfed. Not all of their cards, but but just you know quite a few. I think I think it's like five cards, six cards, something like that. However, blood is still very very good. First is forest. You get to blow up fairies. Blowing up fairies is actually really huge, so that way they can't just like bounce them to make ancient elves or anything like that. Additionally, versus neutral force, you can go ahead and just like drop it on eight, and just blow just blow up a just blow up a fairy board or an house board, and that'll, and that'll feel good. Let's see what else. Versus dragon, it's not the best, but it's not awful either. Like for this deck, usually if you're playing versus dragon, you, you'll usually just be tempoing out with the with the Elder Tortoise, which is actually very, very nice because with Elder Tortoise, you can go ahead and you, you can turn off the, the enhanced the, the enhanced ability for the Wrath Drake. Sure, your Elder Tortoise takes a little bit of damage, but then you also get to play two creatures and, and they'll have differing differing HP stats and they're both going to be above three HP. At a, uh, being, a, being above, yeah, sorry, being above, uh, being above two HP and ideally being above three HP is very, very good versus Dragon because then it, li it limits the, the it limits the amount of ways that they can AOE you. Uh, at, at like 4 HP, you, you, only, you only die to to Grimnir and Conflag, which, as I've already said, both of those cards give up give up a lot of give up a lot of initiative to go ahead and and play them. And just kind of put you and just kind of put you right back, yeah, and just kind of put you right back into, into the driver's seat. Versus versus Haven again, like it's, it's going to be one of those things you just kind of tempo out with the Elder Tortoise. To just go ahead and try to and try to force a Themis, and and just try to and just try to like stall to you to you like to you like get polys like this deck. It, it actually does kind of well for versus 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 Haven, just because well it does kind of well for Haven, but you still you still really want to you still really want to try to find your poly as fast as possible, just because poly is going to be high high win high you win versus these like slower decks. However, you can still out tempo people and just kind of kill them that way too, which is really funny. But yeah, I think I think that's, I think that's all of these cards. But yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I, I know that this was like a longer video. I think I think it's about like forty minutes or so. But there were but there were like a lot of things we need to talk about. The the last thing that, that I wanted to say was that like was that all was that although you haven't seen like this type of well. Although you haven't seen like this type of deck in this game before, this is a, this is a concept that people do, which is to kind of go, which is to do, which is to do low curve control, in which your in which your control deck that, that, that's playing that's playing a lower curve in order in order to better combat aggro. Um, well, uh, something 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 that someone asked me was that like, was that oh, uh, do you think do you think Saha Lucy is bad now? I don't actually think Saha Lucy is bad. What what I think is that like. Is that it's bad versus some things like like say for example is bad versus versus ambush sword versus ambush sword, okay so you go Saha Lucy, you phys you physically can't you physically can't you physically can't interact with, with the board, uh, because they're because because if you're versus a good player everything's gonna be in stealth so you can't actually trade into anything, and so you just heal four but they still have like fourteen damage on board so you die anyway, same thing with same thing with with the Saha Isherfell, with uh, like say versus like neutral stuff. Versus neutral stuff, if you go Saha Lucy, but they have like but they have like at least three creatures in play, you're you're still gonna eat a lot of damage just because like whatever creature you didn't kill, they're just they're just gonna eva that into your face and you're gonna eat like at least at least five to six damage and that's that, that's a lot of damage to be eating and that kind of actually 
and that kind of actually because it out damages the healing it, it's actually a net loss for you and so instead of being a net game which, which, which is which is like the big thing about about uh, about going for saw packages they they want to get like a, a big gain in, in the mid game so so for me like this deck it, it, it kind of like it kind of adheres to that concept of again like just like low curve to be able to kind of to be able to, to kind of contest the, the other like aggressive early game strategies just because like versus early game strategies if they're playing a creature early you need to be playing a creature early just because you can always outscale them but you just need to be able to you know like not be half dead at like at like say like three and, and just praying that they don't like top deck a burn spell to kill you <coughs> sorry about that sorry about that but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it go ahead and leave a like if you if you if you enjoyed it uh if you didn't enjoy it go ahead, and, go ahead and let me know why you didn't enjoy it down in the comments below i do listen i, I do listen to all the feedback i get go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't as well and yeah thank you guys for